Hey everybody, it's me Edward Jones back with a new video. Today I'm just doing a little video on this, um, this big iron. This is a Webley Mark VI um, revolver. It was This one was made in 1917. Um, if the information by the serial number right here, uh, not, not a serial number, but the unit number right here is correct. Um, guns didn't have guns didn't start having serial numbers until like 1964, so that would just be a unit number. Um, so this is a revolver that I um, that a friend, his, a friend's dad wanted me to work on, and uh, potentially sell, which hopefully I'll be able, I'll be able to do today. Um, I found someone who wants to buy it, but I want to do, just do a little quick video on it. Um, I've been working on this thing for roughly uh, roughly a month, month and a half. Um, Around the time of all this stuff, you know, all this mess was going on, and this uh, this gun was actually pretty was pretty neat. It was covered in rust. It was a uh, it was pretty uh, rusted on the surface, but um, I managed to clean it up and get it looking uh, much nicer. You can see here one of the things that was damaged. Um, you notice there's a, there's a wing on this side. Um, on this side, the wing was kind of broken off and it was jagged, so I ground it off. I ground it till it was kind of smooth. Unfortunately, I you know I thought I thought it was one piece that could be replaced, but it was part of the part of this uh, part of the the barrel assembly. So only thing I could really do is uh, you know grind it flat. Uh, perhaps if I had you know if I had a TIG welder and some the right you know the right uh, the right metal, I could maybe maybe make another wing. But uh, I figured it wasn't it was wasn't all that important. It didn't seem like it would it affected the function at all. But uh, so let's get into it. This gun is a uh, like I said, it's a British revolver. It's uh, this one was, and these were used during World War um, during World War One in different variations. They had there was a 38 caliber one. This is the 455. Uh, I got a box of 455 Webley, um, courtesy of Phoenix Fart. If you watch if you watch this video, I want to give another shout out to his channel because um, he's uh, he's another gun channel in South Carolina, and he sold me the he sold me the rounds that I needed for this revolver. Because like I said, when I started working on this. Um, you really couldn't. I think it's S. I think it's S and D. S and S and B. Uh, ammo, and they were just about you know out. And so he had some ammo. He was able to um get for me. So this is a this is a round that shoots. Uh, it's 455 Webley. This is a 260 gram bullet. The brass is pretty short. Now, the 455 is this is a 45 ACP. Um, this is slightly wider than this. And the bullet is actually, the bullet is about thirty grains heavier than this one. The difference being, this bullet is only traveling around uh, six hundred and thirty feet per second. This bullet will travel around eight hundred and thirty to eight hundred fifty feet per second. So this is a this this round this gun is pretty soft shooting. Uh, one thing I kind of like about it is when I, I, did, I was able to test fire it, it had uh, there was unburnt powder on the inside of the barrel. Oops. Um, so it it was I guess it's not really a gun that I guess whatever powder to use. Um, for this ammunition, it didn't, it didn't burn away, but it's some pretty good stuff. It's Fiocchi ammunition, and it's so so specialized that have you know they have it on the box like this. But uh, it's a cool it's a cool revolver. Um, now the way this works is now you notice the cylinder just play in the cylinder, but that doesn't mean the gun is worn out. Um, out even though this gun was made around World War One, this gun. This this, is, this isn't a bad sign. In fact, many many weapon revolvers does they do this. This is how it's, it's how they set up. And it's because when you're pulling the trigger, as soon as you you know even as your as the cylinder rotates, right when it, the right when the um, the hammer strikes the firing pin, everything locks up. So right on cue, everything locks up. And then once they release the cylinder, go back to you know go back to having that kind of play. But that's just how it's designed. Um, taking this apart wasn't all that, wasn't all that difficult. Uh, probably probably the part that I had probably the part that I had the most trouble with was this area right here where it, um, where the hinge assembly is. Because the way this works, so this is your rear sight, your rear, but this is a lever here. This is a brake action revolver. So you push this all the way back, and it breaks in half. Um, six shot. So the way it works, so. What it does is it do eject the empties, kind of like a, just like an Ivers Johnson or a 45 Schofield. You have your um, 
you have your extractor it extracts all the brass and then by the time that that snaps shut all the brass already fallen out so in fact I'll do a demonstration for you guys um, the first Webley I ever fired was a Webley Fosbury uh, by again shout out the Phoenix uh, Phoenix Sparks channel <laughs> Let me see if I can get um, some of this brass to fit in there. Uh, brass needs to be resized. I'll just use these rounds. Um, but it's a pretty cool trick. He had a, he has a, a Webley Fosbury, and that's a, a semi-automatic revolver. It is pretty cool. The, the, the whole top of the gun slides back, slides back and forth as the gun fires because like, there are these uh, um, like these there's like these tracks cut into the cut into the cylinder and as the gun fires it rotates the cylinder but yeah as it works everything pushes up like this and everything would just you know snap out and fall to the floor and it was a pretty cool trick um, this is a pretty this is a pretty large revolver um, I would say size comparison wise is about as big as a 44 magnum In fact, I'll do a little size comparison. Here's a here's my 1911. You can see how this does have a six-inch barrel. This is a five-inch barrel, but overall, this is size. There's a noticeable size difference. All in all, I guess it's a pretty cool gun. Um, notice that big spike? <laughs> that's that's the that's your firing pin it's attached you know, attached to the hammer. I ain't going anywhere. I don't think you really do much to wear that out. The trigger pull is kind of stiff. Um, and single action is actually pretty uh, it's nice, it's pretty comfortable. But in double action, it's, it's pretty long. And it cre it's not very smooth. Maybe if there was a way to slick it up, it could be slicked up. Let's see what else. One, uh, one of the things I'm impressed with myself uh, um, um, when I was working on this gun, so the spring right here, uh, this is the spring for the barrel latch. Now this, uh, this, this it was it was weak. This is like probably the one, one of the weak, one of the two two parts that had to be replaced. This spring and then the spring for the because the hammer stirrup on the inside that disintegrated. I was able to replace it with a spring um, from I think from maybe from a, either another gun or from a ballpoint pen. Either way, it works. This spring had to be a uh, had to be replaced. Now I got a replacement from Numeric Arms, but the one they had, um, the one they uh, sold, you know, sold for this revolver and the others like it, didn't quite look, um, didn't quite look all that nice. Didn't quite match it with the gun. So what I did was I got this one of the springs that I worked on for that Smith and Wesson 32 hand ejector. I got a, there was a spring I had that was too short. I took that spring, I heated up, bent, you know, heated up and bent it, and I had to reshape it. Fit it, reshape it, fit it, reshape it, and then I had to put a dimple. Once one, and one of the things I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I got the the spring for Numeric Arms, because there's a way to, there's a way that you have to uh, get the spring to stay in place. And I hope you guys can see it, but there's a there's a hole right here, and there's a, a stud that sticks out from the spring, from the fact from the from the original spring that hold that keeps the spring in place. Numeric Arms ones has a dimple that's pushed into it, um, you know, through the machining process. So all I was able to do was heat this one up and punch another dip, punch a dimple into it to keep it in place. Um, I got some boiled linseed oil right here that I use for help tempering the spring, and was able to get it uh, get it to function properly. And I was very I was very proud of this. This is the first time I actually made a spring, well from an, from an, um, from a piece of from a scrap. I guess not really. I guess it's really a really scrap, but just from another part I wasn't using. Um, but yeah, I made a spring. And I was pretty happy about that, and I had to, you know, just contour it, just you know, to shape it a little bit more so it fits alongside the gun. And I kind of blew—I guess I blew it. I reheated it again and you know, dunked it in the lint, boiled linseed oil so that it, so that the finish on the spring matches the finish on the gun, so it doesn't stand out, you know, being in the white. But overall, it looks pretty nice. You know, good cylinder, um, good barrel. Like I said, when my friend brought it over, it was just real, it was very rusty. Uh, I used Croil to break up all the rust. I had to let the Croil sit, it, sit on it for about uh, like 12 hours. 
and then I got a bronze brush, not a bronze brush, I got a brass brush, and, uh, sorry, it was a copper brush, they all, they all kind of have a very similar color, I used a copper brush, copper cleaning brush, and a scrub, uh, scrub the whole surface, scrub everything, but all the parts, uh, after I got everything, you know, fitted, and all the parts, you know, cleaned up and, uh, put back together, just oiled it, and it's, you know, functions, functions pretty well. We would not do that. Uh, this it would it was real stiff to push to push back because the rust was so severe, was so severe, and it wouldn't snap snap back forward. And I think that's what actually compromised the spring. I think the rust the rust got to it, and just you know it was a matter of time since the spring's exposed. So it was only a matter of time before it just uh you know just, it just gave you know, gave up. But yeah, I would say if you have any guns that are blued and anything that's old. Coil and a copper brush, copper copper uh, wire brush works very well with cleaning up all the rust, but keeping the blue or patina um, finish on the gun. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, oh, one more thing, I did do some I did do some shooting um, a while back when I test fired it, and it's at five yards. Uh, it's okay. It's just that the the trigger is not is, is the trigger not that is not. You know, I'd say it's not one of his best quality, not one of his better qualities. But overall, it's pretty. I'd say it's pretty accurate. And you know, for a military pistol, this is. I think this is, you know, pretty good. You know, considering what you'd be using it for. You know, against man-sized targets. Well, that's my video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, enjoy this little video on this uh, old British revolver. Someday, if I ever come across another one, if it's in, you know, depending on what shape it's in, how much it costs. I may pick it up and you know, you know, clean it up for myself. The thing is, I just know the ammunition would be more be it'd be expensive. I have to start reloading for it. But we'll see how things go on, go in the future. But that's my video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe. I'll leave a comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. You, um, do you own a Webley? Do you own a Webley Mark VI or a Mark IV or any other uh, Webley variants or even a Webley Fosbury? Please share your thoughts. And if you want to make a donation to the channel to help with products like this. Just go to look for uh, the, the, go, the Give Up That Cheese button on my homepage on YouTube and send you to PayPal. Donate any amount you would like. Any gripes, complaints, send me a PM. I see what I can do to address them. That's my video. That's on uh, the Webley Mark VI Revolver. I'm Edward Jones. You guys take care and God bless.